Okay, so welcome to um, another free lecture of uh, Dr. Hydri's step one. Um, what we do during our lecture is we uh, discuss about high yield first aid information. We read through first aid text by text, and uh, we discuss U-world questions correlations with uh, the, the text which is present in the first aid 2020. For this lecture over here, this will be a short lecture. Uh, for this lecture, we what we would be doing is uh, I will be trying to teach you guys of uh, how to draw the brachial plexus in the shortest time possible. The reason for which I want to do this is because uh, during your exam, you will get a lot of questions from the uh, upper extremity nerve that is over here. So knowing the names of the nerves, the cause of the injury and the presentation is just not enough. Okay. So uh, in the meantime, you guys also have to master this brachial plexus. And if you do not know which nerves arise from which cords, um, what are the branches of the nerves over here, and uh, which branch is associated with this diagram. And this diagram itself is extremely high yield, okay? So what USMLE step one, what they would do is they would give this diagram by itself, and they would have labelings over here, over here, over here, and they will try to describe a lesion about the nerve, and uh, they will ask you to identify it, okay? So if you can draw the brachial plexus in, let's say, around 10 to 15 seconds, and uh, you have a short rough page in your actual exam, if you can do that in 10 to 15 seconds, you can associate all the questions with the plexus, and it will be easy for you to answer those questions and not miss out on the marks. Okay, so with that being said, Let's start with our drawing for the brachial plexus first. For the first one, I will go easy uh, and slow and I'll try to make you guys understand of how you can draw the plexus in the shortest time possible, okay? So without further ado, let's start. First of all, the brachial plexus is a combination of uh, five nerves, five nerves that is over here. It starts with C5, next one is C6, then you have your C7, okay, C8, and then you have your T1, okay? And the way that we will be doing this is um, by the help of um, some silly mnemonics, okay? So first of all, what, what we will do is we will try to form a spear, okay? So like the spear that you see in the movie Aquaman, okay? So something like that. So we would try to form the spear. So our first spear is between six C5 and C6. So this is our first spear, okay? The next one is between our C8 to C uh, to T1. This is our second one over here. And our last spear is an inverted spear that will go from C7 to inverted over here. Okay. And if you can get uh, the drawings of these three spears, then you are close to 80% done with your drawing or brachial plexus. The next step, uh, what you have to do is you have to figure out how you can connect these three spears together according to the plexus. And that is extremely easy. So first of all, what you do is you connect uh, spear number one with spear number uh, three over here, the inverted spear, by a cross, that is by this one, and then you have this one, okay? And then the next one, which you do is you try to connect number three with number two by this one with this. So it's a cross for the first and just a single diagonal line for the next one, okay? And then the next one, which you do is you try to connect the first spear and the second spear, and this is what you do, okay? So it's easy, very easy. And if you have that, then you are 90% done with your brachial plexus. And then after that, you draw the last one, which is this all the way, this line that goes through. Basically, this line is representing the long thoracic nerve. Okay, and we all know what muscle this innervates, a very high yield muscle, that is serratus anterior. Okay. So if you have these drawing done, and this is your brachial plexus, and this is over, okay? So this is all you have to do. It barely even took me around 30 seconds to draw this out, even if I was, even um, uh, when I was going slow, okay? So after you're done with the plexus, the next thing which you have to do is uh, you have to name the uh, nerves, okay? So the way that uh, we do it with our students is uh, we talk about the story that uh, we talk about a fight with Axel, and then we talk about the fight with a rod, okay? And if excellent rod fails, then you need your skills as an MMA, okay? So this is a very silly mnemonic. It works for me, okay? Uh, this is a very silly mnemonic. It works for me and it works for our students. So hopefully it will work for you too. 
So you need an axle and a rod and you need your MMA skills. So MMA is basically your mixed martial arts. Okay. So for the first one, you need your axle. Okay. So this is your first. Okay. Then the next one, you need a rod. Okay. And then if your axle and rod fails, then you need to have your MMA skills, which are your MM. And there's no other A in the brachial plexus because this A will go for X, so it's axillary. So the last one is U, so it's basically MMU. Okay, instead of A, it's actually U, but the mnemonic is MMA. And last one is even if you're, uh, you know your axle skills, your rod skills, and your MMA skills, uh, if you have uh, big muscles, okay, if you have big muscles, then uh, you will win the fight. And uh, uh, this will go with your brachial plexus because you need your arms to uh, use all these techniques of fightings. Okay. So first of all, you have your axle rod, you have your MMU, and then your muscles. Make sure that you don't mess up the story. Okay. Because if you put your axle here and then your rod there, you'll mess up the whole story and then you will mess up all your questions. So this is your brachial plexus, as simple as, simple as that. The next one is what we will try to do is we will try to name the roots, trunks, divisions, and the branches. Okay, so the roots are your roots over here, which are obvious. Okay, the next one are your trunks. Okay, so the trunks are the ones which are over here. So you have three trunks over here. You have the upper trunk. Okay, then you have the middle trunk. And then you have your lower trunk. Okay, the next one is your division okay divisions are not that high yield as compared to the trunks and roots so we have roots trunks then we have divisions and the last high yield one are your cords so we have three cords so we have three trunks and then we have three cords and for the cords the number one cord which i will mark down is the medial cord and why is this obvious? Because the ulnar nerve is the um, median most nerve of your forearm, right? So this is the median, um, this is the median cord, okay? And um, if this is the median cord, then obviously this is the lateral cord, okay? So it's all the way opposite of median, so that's lateral. And this one over here is your posterior cord, and you have no anterior. So with that being said, this is your whole brachial plexus. Okay, and uh, you can do this in less than almost 10 to 15 seconds. So the best thing when, which you should do when you receive a question about uh, brachial plexus is instead of uh, thinking about the plexus in your head, try to take a nice deep breath, think about this diagram, and then draw it through. Okay, what this will do is not only will it save you time, it will also assure you that you get the question right every time. Okay, so now let's say uh, you have a question which says that you have a patient who was involved in a bar fight, and this is an actual this is an actual UL question. They will say that you have a patient who was involved in in some sort of a bar fight, and in that bar fight he got hit in the mid shaft of his humerus by a blunt object. Okay, which uh, which part of the brachial plexus is he most uh, support? Is he um, which part of the brachial plexus is uh, um, is most supposed to be um, affected? Okay, so which part of the brachial plexus is most supposed to be affected? And your answer will be radial nerve. So this will be your answer. So if they have labelings over here, let's say they have A, B, C, D, and E, but you know how to draw the plexus yourself, okay? after you draw the plexus you would know easily that they're talking about the radial nerve because the radial nerve is a nerve which um, goes around the mid shaft of the humerus and if that is um if that is hurt and it, or if that is uh the nerve that they are talking about then you can easily point out the fact that b is your radial nerve and your answer is b as simple as that okay with that being said let's see if we can draw the brachial plexus again okay so this will be very fast okay so you have c5 c6 c7 okay c8 then you have your t1 okay let's see how fast we can do and this is your first spear okay this is your second spear this is your third spear okay then you have a cross like this then this one and then this and this and then you have your story about the axe rod your m m u and if everything fails, if you have big muscles, then, you, then that's what it is. So basically, 
uh, axillary radial, musculocutaneous median, and ulnar. Then quickly write the names of the cords. Okay, so once again, medial. This is the, the medial cord, posterior cord, and the lateral cord. And then if you want to draw more, if you have more time in your hand, then you can even name down the trunks. The trunks are upper trunk, middle trunk, and your lower trunk. And with that being said, this is uh, your diagram or the brachial plexus. And this is how you can do it in less than 20 seconds, around 10 to 15 seconds. So I hope this helps. Okay, so um, next time when you get some free time, try to draw the brachial plexus every now and then so that you can master it. So that when you get your rough paper in your USMLE step one, you can draw this plexus out. So if you receive questions in your eight hour exam, you can correlate your answers from this drawing which you have. Okay, so if this lecture helped you out, please uh, like our page. Um, we have our uh, lectures every day from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's an online USMLE step one lecture. Um, our pricings are extremely fair. We charge around $1 per hour because uh, the fact is we um, charge for the fact of teaching our student, not for the fact of earning money. And uh, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys um, hope you guys had fun learning the brachial plexus. And uh, if you have any further questions about tutoring and you are interested for the, our mentorship, please send us an email at ferdin.hydri at gmail.com and we can give you all the subscription information. Okay, thank you.